I've been to The Hague in the Netherlands to find out about how the ICJ works, but to actually speak with someone who knows the intimate inner workings of the court, who has sat on the court, I had to come here to the mountainous reaches in the state of Vermont, where behind me in this remote home lives Judge Stephen Schwebel. He's 90 years old and on the verge of retirement as an international consultant. But he's a former president of the court and also an expert on Belize's case before the court. Judge Schwebel is the co-author of this 2002 legal opinion, which advised Belize that it had a strong case to take to the ICJ. He remains confident in that advice. I think that the case of Belize is extremely strong. And fundamentally, his position is based on these, the 1859 Treaty and the exchange of notes. There are two treaties, the 1859 Treaty, which initially drew the boundary, uh, and the 1931 exchange of notes, which reaffirmed uh, the boundary. And in all those years in between, and for a long time preceding 1859, you had what the court would call effectivity, facts on the ground. And those facts on the ground were presence of uh, English settlers uh, tolerated by the, uh, the Spanish authorities of the day. Uh, and so both in practice and in terms of treaty prescription, uh, Belize has a title uh, to uh, its own territory within its current boundaries, which is very compelling. And to that, Schwebel adds the fact that Belize has standing at the United Nations. The court is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations. The General Assembly of the United Nations, in which every member of the UN sits, had to vote on the admission of Belize to membership in the UN. That opinion notes that the governing resolutions affirm and reaffirm the territorial integrity of Belize, meaning all of the present territory of Belize. So when I said earlier that Guatemala has an uphill fight, one can see how high the hill is because every member of the United Nations voted to admit Belize to membership on the basis of a territorial integrity. And there was only one state of all the members of the UN that voted against that, and that was Guatemala. But even with all that, Schwebel concedes that Guatemala won't just concede when it goes to court. In a, a lifetime at the law, I have always seen that the contentions of the other side uh, seem stronger when you first hear them than you would have expected. Uh, I, I, Guatemala surely will come to court uh, with a strong team uh, of lawyers who will exercise their legal imagination. And according to the judge, they must be imaginative because they haven't got much to work with. That in 1950, Guatemala asked one of the most eminent international lawyers then living, Judge Manley Hudson, who had been a judge of the Permanent Court of International Justice, to give an opinion on the Belize dispute. And he wrote a very large, detailed, meticulous, objective opinion. And if one reads that opinion, one wonders why didn't Guatemala give up then? Judge Hudson examines all the arguments that could be fought forth for Guatemala, and he finds none of them convincing. But Schwebel says he understands why some Belizeans are naturally afraid to go to court because of cases like Nigeria versus Cameroon, where Nigerians were displaced. But I would note that the court, in the case I mentioned earlier, uh, involving the Bakasi Peninsula, uh, then of Nigeria, 
again gives great weight uh, to uh, treaty interpretation and to uh, a line that it found to be the governing treaty line. Uh, there was, a, it was and is a very large population of Nigerians, Nigerian citizens, or within Nigerian citizens, living in Bakasi. Uh, were displaced. No question about that. There are many in Belize who fear that Belize could end up like Nigeria. <laughs> well, but, but I think I can understand uh, those fears. Uh, uh, these are sensitive matters and, and people uh, understandably uh, can worry uh, about them. Uh, and of course, nobody can absolutely predict the future. But uh, I, I can say, I think, with genuine confidence that Belize has by far the stronger legal case uh, in this dispute. Uh, and I, for one, would be very surprised uh, if uh, the court uh, did not give effect to the 1859 treaty and the 1931 exchange of notes, as well as the effectivities on the ground, uh, which also favor the position of Belize. Schwebel says it is an historic opportunity, one which may not come again. The great virtue of going to the world court now is that it will issue a binding judgment which will put an end to the dispute. And that will be a great boon uh, to Belize. Uh, so in my view, uh, if because of a quite understandable but uh, profoundly unfounded apprehensions, the people of Belize would have voted against going to the court, I think they would vote against their own interest. Uh, this is the opportunity for the settlement of this long-standing dispute uh, definitively uh, by the World Court.